Nobody cares for the woods anymore. A new power is rising. Its victory is at hand. That is no Orkhorn. We are proud to fight alongside men once more. They will cheat you, hurt you, lie. You withdraw your guard, and I will tell you where your doom will be decided. Hello again everyone and welcome to episode 7 in my continuing series of scenario guides. Today as you saw we're going to be looking at Calador Woods which may lead you to wonder why there's a picture of New Jersey on the screen. Well the answer is I couldn't find an image of the Calador Woods map but I figured you know New Jersey, Calador Woods they kind of look the same. Uh, order comes out and heads up to Garden State Parkway, Destruction comes down through Newark and they all meet somewhere around Asbury Park. A battle for domination. Uh, kind of a simple scenario. Uh, the video shouldn't take that long, but there are a few points uh, to discuss. A couple of issues, tips here and there. I have video to support it all, so let's get to it. Now, as you all know, Calador Woods features a single point capture mechanic, and both sides begin the scenario equidistant from that point. So it is time critical and I've made this point before and I'm sure I'll make it again but this is one of those scenarios where you do not have time to mess around in the spawn point. You need to get out of your spawn point and get to the flag as fast as you possibly can. And here you can see uh, that both sides have done that. Now the primary reason of course is if you're playing this scenario to win off of points then your points, the vast majority of them, are going to come from dominate, from capturing and then dominating the flag. Uh, that is the easiest means to win the scenario. Now for the 6v6 crowd, I of course understand that uh, sometimes people log into the scenario just to fight the 6v6 battle and you may not care at all about capturing the flag. You'll fight out in, in the open area somewhere for 15 minutes and if that's your goal, that's fine. But remember the context of my videos, which is always the same. The best means to win the scenario. And this is it. Everyone getting up to and fighting at this location. There are a couple other reasons why you want to do that. Uh, and again, I go back to my, exam my example in the first uh, video I did on Norden Watch, where I made the point that there are no points for capturing the bridge. Where here, there are no points for fighting elsewhere. Uh, so I, I'm just going to state it again. doesn't matter your class. Ranged, healer, art, DPS, MDP, it doesn't matter. Get up to this point. Another reason you want to do that is that it's our job as tanks to help guard and keep uh, particularly uh, the healers alive. And that is much easier to do if you're up here with us then if you're back uh, 100 200 feet whatever away from this point and then because you know if you're back there you become an open target for the witch elf witch hunter crowd who are always looking for someone off by themselves or just off separated from the main gaggle uh, of fighting well it's much easier to help keep those guys off of you if you're up here with the rest of us as opposed to uh, you know, fighting well, back in this area here. Now, as you can see, there is a witch elf that popped out and was going for one of our healers. Now, there's another aspect I'd like you to pay attention to here. Notice the flag icon itself. Um, as time goes on, you'll notice it begin to twitch here and there, right, right there. Now, what this is something I've noticed over time in playing Calador Woods, that the flag uh, tends, or the capture mechanic, 
tends to be keyed to the number of people that are in the zone of control area. And specifically, what I mean by that is, uh, let's say order has six people within the zone of control of the flag and destruction has eight. Well, if that's the case, the flag will begin to tip. It will begin to build toward a destruction capture. And if they keep that ratio up long enough or improve that ratio, it will lock, even if there's still fighting going on around the flag. So that is an important consideration, again, to remember when the scenario begins and you want to get out there uh, and start fighting to stay in this area. Now, the second thing is the timer. Uh, we're almost four minutes into this SC, and neither side has yet to lock the flag. Uh, we've racked up 44 points, but those are based on kills. And as the SC goes on, you'll notice that the side that does eventually lock the flag here will then go on to win uh, in a rather expeditious manner. That's another aspect of the point ratio, is that once one side or the other is successful in capturing the flag, the points do tend uh, to build up rather quickly. So let's watch the fighting here for a moment. Now we're beginning to have some success. Uh, I particularly enjoyed this scenario because I think both sides here were playing for exact same goal and they were applying uh, exact, the exact same mentality. And neither side wanted to give up the advantage of capturing the flag. We wanted to win. And those are, of course, the best moments you can have in a game like this, where both sides are dedicated to accomplishing the same goal and uh, are very determined you know, to achieve that goal. And that's what you see going on here. Uh, this was uh, just, I thought, uh, uh, just a rather exceptional fight. It may seem boring. We're just sort of standing around bashing on each other. But there is a method to the madness, and that is the key, again, to winning in this scenario. That there be a purpose for your destruction. Uh, not, of course, that's the key in any scenario, but here you can see uh, five minutes and 40 seconds into the SC, we finally capture the flag. Uh, a very good fight uh, for domination here. But at this point, we just have to sort of clean up uh, the stragglers. This black guard's still in the area, and you'll see, him. there it goes, the flag sort of reacting to his presence. But once he's down, we have cleared the area, captured the flag, and from this point, uh, we do go on and win the SC. Uh, uh, well, from this, I hate to say easily, because it certainly wasn't. Destruction put up a, a, a very good fight there. Uh, but we do go on to win after having captured the flag. Our second segment of video here features a come from behind victory and the primary reason I included it was just to illustrate uh, that fact. Most scenarios, the, the preponderance of scenarios, when you fall behind uh, by some 300 points, it's not impossible to come back from that, uh, but it does tend to be exceedingly difficult. It's not quite as difficult here and that is a factor tied to the point mechanic of control of the flag itself. Now as you can see, at this point in the scenario, Destruction has uh, 364 points, we have 56. And as I said, usually uh, that is doom uh, for the side with the lower score. But we're going to take the flag back, uh, we're going to establish our dominance here again. and that will quickly begin to change. Now as you can see the flag is, or the icon, it is reacting to our presence even now. And when we clear out the last couple of guys, there you go, we've neutralized the flag. We have more guys around it than they do. And there it is. 
right now from this point on in the video pay attention uh, if you would please to the numbers themselves uh, destruction has 463 points we're now at 147 now I'm gonna do a fade edit here to skip a couple of minutes of time so you don't have to sit and watch all of it but we are now up to 300 uh, 403 they're at 479 that's only 21 points away from a victory and yet because we control the flag uh, we're going to win now we're not going to win this scenario because we were able to kill more of their guys than they were of ours that played a role of course but we're going to win the scenario simply because we controlled the flag and in Calador Woods uh, you can come back from a deficit such as this you know, more than a 300 point deficit you can come back to win and there it is order is victorious in Calador Woods it isn't over until it's over now our final segment of video here uh, I decided to include because it, again it just sort of reinforces the, the basic point in this particular SC we're able to get out rather quickly to the flag point and we're going to capture it within the first minute of play uh, what that does besides the obvious of course but what that does is put the, the forces of destruction in this case but of course it applies to either side uh, at the severe disadvantage of attempting to try to go up and retake the area now I also stuck it in for that little segment right there and it comes up again here in a moment uh, there are times of course where you can as you can see we've captured the flag uh, but there are times of course when you can leave the flag area you can push down this way a little bit but the primary reason you're doing it and in all honest, honesty the reason I was doing it here was attempt to keep destruction off the flag I should have just stayed up there <laughs> but okay, what I what I mean is attempt to keep the destruction forces just keep them away from the flag keep them out of the zone of control area so you can of course do this you can go down this way you don't want to go too far uh, I make I've made that point before and I'm sure I'll make it again I mean there's no sense in chasing them all the way back to uh, to their spawn point to where you're so close that the guards come out and get you I mean that's that that's silly it doesn't matter what scenario you're playing the object here of course is to keep them out of the zone of control because as we talked about earlier the flag will react to the presence of the opposition so we're gonna you know again we're maintaining dominance here and uh, destruction is making another push let's just watch for a moment now again I'm pushing down this way as I said just to try to keep the forces of the destruction uh, both a little bit disorganized as I can but we have dominance so at this point I'm just going to uh, lay down and take a nap All right, to review what uh, we talked about this video, uh, there's just a few points. But first and foremost, uh, this is a time critical SC. Uh, get out of the spawn point, preferably in mass, and get up to the flag and fight there. Control of the flag can be determined on a ratio basis. We talked about that, but again, the, the, the brief version is. Whoever has more guys in the zone of control will start to influence the flag to lock in your favor. Uh, once you control the flag, the points do attend to, uh, tend to accumulate rather quickly. And I guess you can chalk this next one up to a personal pet peeve if you wish. But there's no need to push all the way down to the opposition spawn. doesn't matter which side you're playing. Uh, if you control the flag here in Calador Woods, just stay there. You know, if you're winning, just stay there. And if the opposition comes back, that's fine. And if they don't, that's fine too, because uh, you'll lock it up rather quickly and then move on to the next scenario. On a personal note, I included one final brief segment of video here, and this was recorded specifically for and especially dedicated to those few folks over time who have given me grief about my UI. I played a number of SCs uh, and some RVR where I had that my UI completely turned off and my plan was to include these in my next composite video whenever I get around to doing that uh, but when I publish it you'll be able to see how this effort turned out 
Well, guys, that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, as you see, next time we will move on to Blackfire Basin. Uh, until then, as always, I do appreciate your time. I appreciate you looking in. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you next time. Can I help you guys with anything? Oh, no. My fiancé was just helping me with some honeymoon destinations. Right. We're getting married. Congratulations. Where are you guys thinking about going? New Jersey. Huh.